So let's take a look now at two vulnerabilities we're watching closely, household debt and housing, and their relationship to financial stability. Housing's certainly top of mind for many Canadians these days. But if you were to dig up Bank of Canada's reports on financial system stability that I just mentioned, going back as far as 2006, you would see analysis on escalating housing prices and increasing housing debt. So in other words, these two vulnerabilities have existed in Canada's financial system for some time. And the buildup of these vulnerabilities continued after the global financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. Canada's financial system sailed through that shock relatively smoothly, and our, econo our economy recovered from that period quicker than most. A decade of low interest rates, a growing population, and a constrained housing supply all combined to feed a steady march upward in house prices. Higher house prices meant Canadians were taking on more debt to buy their homes. And as prices continued to rise quickly, some Canadians saw housing as an investment opportunity as well as a source of shelter and took on additional debt to invest in housing. Well before the arrival of COVID-19, Canadians were worried about the cost of housing becoming detached from incomes, particularly for first-time home buyers. And they were worried about investors contributing to the rapid increase in house prices, particularly in large urban markets. Then the pandemic hit and our housing market shifted up yet another gear, and not just in places like Toronto and Vancouver. We were all spending more time working at home and people in cities wanted more space, which put pressure on housing demand in smaller cities and towns. Low interest rates that were in place to support the economy through the pandemic also helped fuel high house prices by reducing carrying costs. Over the course of less than two years, house prices went up by more than 50% in most markets. And housing activity, the number of houses being bought and sold, was about 30% higher than pre-pandemic levels. This spring, we emerged from the pandemic. Restrictions and monetary policy began to tighten rapidly in response to high inflation. And the housing market started to react. This was to be expected. The level of price increases and sales activity were both unsustainably high. And because most people borrow to buy a house, it's one of the areas of the economy that reacts the quickest to monetary policy. But this tightening cycle has been particularly steep. We've moved interest rates up quickly because history tells us that front-loading rate increases gives us the best chance to cool the economy quickly and to keep inflation expectations anchored. This avoids the prospect of larger increases down the road. Higher rates are starting to work to slow the economy and tame inflation, but we've got a ways to go to get inflation back to target. But there are some early signs that monetary policy is taking hold. Unfortunately, this adjustment is not without some pain, and we recognize that. One group of Canadians who will be finding this adjustment painful are those who recently purchased a home, potentially stretching their budget to do so, and who chose a variable rate mortgage. This isn't a large share of households, but it is larger than it would have been based on past historical trends. This is because more Canadians opted for a variable mortgage over the last year than have in the past at a time when housing prices were also going up. Borrowers with a variable rate mortgage will already have seen significant increases in their monthly payments if their payments are also variable. Borrowers with a variable rate mortgage and fixed payments may face higher payments if they hit what we call the trigger rate, the rate at which their monthly mortgage payment is only covering interest and not paying down the principal. The bank has done some recent work to estimate the share of households that have reached their trigger rates, and that information will be available on our website as of today. Homeowners with fixed rate mortgages may also be looking at higher payments when they come to renew, depending on when they took out their mortgage and whether they have room to extend their amortization period. So the bottom line is that mortgage costs for some Canadians have already increased, and they will likely increase for most others in time. So homeownership is becoming more expensive. In addition, house prices are also coming down, albeit modestly, relative to the recent increase. We need lower house prices to restore balance in Canada's housing market and make home ownership more affordable for more Canadians. But lower house prices will add to the stress for some people who purchased recently. 
they will have reduced equity and therefore potentially limited options to refinance. So back to our framework for monitoring financial stability. Canada's economy has a long-standing vulnerabilities in the form of escalating house prices and elevated levels of household debt that were further exacerbated over the pandemic. And the risk of a trigger that may affect financial stability has increased as a result of high inflation and the response of increasing interest rates. But there are very good reasons to believe that the financial system as a whole will weather this period of stress and remain resilient. Since the 08-09 financial crisis, countries around the world put in place a series of reforms, including higher capital and liquidity levels at banks, to shore up the financial system and protect against future shocks. Here at home, those measures included a borrower level mortgage stress test to ensure Canadians could continue to afford their home as interest rates went up. And importantly, we are not expecting a severe economic downturn with the kind of large job losses typical of past recessions. This is not to minimize the very real hardship that some are feeling. Higher mortgage payments are difficult to handle for many people and all the more so when other costs are going up. In this environment, the Bank of Canada is making two important contributions. First, we'll continue to monitor the impacts of higher interest rates on Canadians and more broadly on the financial system. And second, we'll get inflation back to target. We know higher interest rates are difficult for Canadians, particularly young Canadians, many of whom are recent home buyers and therefore carrying higher debt loads. We don't want to make this transition more difficult than it has to be, but higher interest rates in the short term will bring inflation down in the long term. Canadians, including young Canadians, are looking for ways to protect themselves from rising prices, and we are working hard to protect them from entrenched inflation. It'll take time to get back to solid growth, and low inflation, but we will get there. Working through this difficult phase, we'll get back to price stability with sustained economic growth, which benefits everyone. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be very happy to spend some time on questions now. <laughs>